I, I, um, I, w I was, um, I had a, I knew someone, I used to go to a restaurant in Santa Monica, California and sit at the counter. And often there was a guy who sat alongside me and um, he'd have a, he had a big, a large hardback book. I mean, it was like oversized hardback and he'd, he'd open it and read and have his coffee and have his breakfast. And we'd have light conversation. Um, so once I asked him what he was reading, and he said, um, he had a Greek accent. He said, the Upanishads. And although I had some background, independent background in spirituality since childhood, and had done a lot of investigation of that, I really wasn't sure what the Upanishads were. Um, I asked him, you know, what's the, what's, it, what's the Upanishads? What's that about? And he wouldn't answer me. He didn't know what to say. He kind of looked around the restaurant and it's like, he seemed irritated. And finally, he, he, he just stops and stares at me. And he says, non-duality. And that kind of shook my world because I asked myself, well, what is that? You know, what the heck is it? I didn't ask him what non-duality was. I should have, but I didn't. Instead, he imparted, it's like he imparted something to me. It's like he initiated me in some way. And any initiation, I think, um, brings a person to silence. And you have to absorb, I mean, literally in your cells, what it is that happened in any kind of an initiation. If it doesn't bring you to silence, if it's like, oh, wow, fantastic, then to me, that's more of an aha moment. You know, we have aha moments, right, where we get an insight and understanding, and we have initiations. Initiations go very deep, and you sort of have to, it takes time to let it assume a presence within you, within your cells, literally, your nervous system. And following initiation and initiation, then a person could do what they will. They, they could ignore it or pursue it. So, so I pursued it. I pursued non-duality. So this was in the early 80s when I encountered this gentleman in the word non-duality. And I had to pursue that. And I, it wasn't until... Um, probably the middle 90s that I realized, I said, I have to do something with non-duality. I have to express it. I have to bring it to the world. I just had that, it, that just fell into my lap, that need to do that. It wasn't a decision. It wasn't an idea. It wasn't something like, oh, this will be cool. It was like, um, it was like I had to do it. So I spent a couple of years. I mean, I had no idea how to do it because I wasn't familiar with the internet. It was the mid 90s. And there was the internet, there was email and so on, but I had no feel for it. I had no experience with it. So it wasn't until 1997 I got online and, and then started talking about non-duality. And people didn't really want to hear about it. In fact, the people that I met were on a, a Kundalini uh, Usenet group in 1997. And three or four of us started to talk about non-duality. Eventually, we got thrown off the group for being off topic. Um, but we started our own group. And, and, and in 1990, now, by now it was 1998, people didn't know how to start groups, really didn't know how to start, how to do that. But um, a couple of people were, were uh, I mean, were very key in doing that. So while I might be a, you know, a front person in some way for non-duality. Um, I'm one of many people that contributed. I, you know, it's not something I could have done on my own, bringing non-duality to the public, not something I could have done on my own. There were a lot of people behind it. People, uh, initially uh, Dr. Harsh Luther, who um, really had the idea to say, look, let's leave the Kundalini group and start our own group. And then it was um, Ed Jason, who went by the name of Lobster, who actually found out how to start a group. You know, nowadays you can start 10 groups in 10 minutes. 
on Facebook or something. Back then, no one knew how to do it, but Ed Jason started a group. Somehow I ended up uh, owning the group and moderating it. Um, then there were just a lot of people that were, that supported this whole idea of making a non-duality popular, bringing it to the people, taking it out of departments of religious studies, taking it out of ashrams, taking it out of scriptures, of course, leaving it all there at the same time, but bringing it into the public, putting it on, right on kitchen tables with the orange juice, putting it in the um, supermarket line while you're waiting to buy your groceries. So a lot of people have been involved in it. I just named a couple, there are a lot of people. So that's how I got into it. That's how we got started. It was this urge on the part of a lot of people to make non-duality ordinary. And, and the group, our group still goes, and many, there's probably hundreds of groups out there on non-duality. So that's my story, I don't know, yeah. <laughs> thank, thank Oh yeah, huge difference. Number one is that um, it was novel. It was amazing that people would meet other people that were interested in non-duality. It's like, you know, when we had eight or 10 people, it's like, it was amazing that there were like eight or 10 other people that shared this uh, interest in non-duality. That was like amazing. You know, nowadays, I guess it's commonplace. So that was one thing, the, the novelty of it was one, was one um, difference between then and now. The other major thing was that as a moderator of non-duality salon, I wouldn't moderate. I just let people talk. Um, at that time, you could do that. There were no spammers, really. There was no craziness out there. And I often got called on that in 1998 and 99. People said, you know, why don't you, you know, this person's crazy. That person's posting too much. This person doesn't know what they're talking about. You know, you got to do some moderation. And I wouldn't do it. And I don't know why. Looking back, I know why. But at the time, it just seemed right to not moderate. And I think the reason was that it was the only group that I knew of in the world, I guess, that where people could speak freely about non-duality. And you know, who was I to say, you don't belong on this group? Well, where would they go? There was nowhere for them to go. So, um, but what happened by doing that, the non-duality salon then was a kind of vessel. And so I had a certain, <laughs> awareness of the alchemy of the vessel. And I was aware that that not moderating and allowing people to talk as much as they want and do what they want, it would build up a pressure within that vessel. And that the pressure would, would um, be released in the form of new groups, which is what I wanted. I, I didn't care about my own group. I wanted non-duality to spread and become mainstream. So after a while, after a few months or a year, people were a little bit more knowledgeable on how to start their own groups, their own email forums. So I would say to, say to people, look, start your own group. You know, I encouraged people to start their own groups. And I said, come back here to the original non-duality salon and publicize your group and take people from non-duality salon and bring them to your group. It was like, I wanted non-duality salon to just disappear in the form of other groups. I said, please make this group disappear, spread the word of non-duality. That's all I really cared about. That was my mission. And, and that happened. People started groups. I would go out of my way to publicize them. People would join them. And when I thought, just when I thought people would be leaving non-duality salon and kind of leave me back to my own world, non-duality salon kept growing. So, you know, they say there's this, the adage, you know, the more you give, the more you get. Well, I wasn't looking to do that, but it's, you know, it does work out that way. I just wanted to give people the tools and the ways to start their own groups, to spread the word of the people's non-duality, popular non-duality. And then, so then my group got bigger, you know, I don't, I don't know. I wasn't looking to do that. So it was all intuitive on my part, totally intuitive. Um, so those are the two differences between then and now 
on the one hand, the novelty of people interested in non-duality meeting and um, the sense that I was operating intuitively and not moderating at all um, are really two big differences between then and now. Yeah. <laughs>